Hey guys, Hackersploit here, back again with another video. Welcome back to the Penetration Testing Bootcamp. Now that we've taken a look at passive information gathering, we can now uh, get started with active information gathering and the exciting stuff, which is scanning. So this video is primarily going to be focused on, on scanning. So we'll talk about uh, scanning, uh, types of scanning, so network scanning, port scanning, uh, various TCP flags. And then of course, we're going to take a look at the three-way handshake, and uh, that's going to be quite important here. So... Uh, let's get started with understanding what scanning is uh, firstly. So scanning is typically conducted after extensive passive reconnaissance has been conducted on the target. So establishing things like IP blocks, uh, domains, and then performing uh, further reconnaissance on those domains to get the servers, uh, name servers, etc. And the objective with scanning is to identify active targets and potential access vectors in the forms of ports and services. So you're essentially looking uh, or you're trying to build a uh, map of understanding of the, your target and what services and port uh, it has running, as well as the operating system. And that's something we'll be taking a look at when we'll be uh, using something like Nmap, which is fantastic. So this stage typically does not involve any actual exploitation or gaining of access. Sometimes it can happen uh, by mistake, or if there is a serious misconfiguration, you could find yourself uh, with a position to access resources that have not been secured. Uh, or you have something like Telnet, which is really not the case nowadays. But the objective here is to build a profile of the target based on the information you get. So information like uh, operating system version, uh, service versions, and any other misconfigurations you may find within the stack on your target, right? So the objectives of scanning, and this could involve both uh, port scanning and uh, network scanning, are going to be uh, a for host discovery, B for operating system and service detection. And of course, this gives you an idea of why it's such it's so important because this allows you to start targeting your low hanging fruit uh, first, right? Instead of uh, instead of not knowing what you're dealing with initially, uh, we'll then take a look at UDP scanning, which is also very important. Uh, stealth scans and firewall evasion, which is something I really want to cover. Uh, because it is becoming increasingly important to uh, learn how to uh, to actually uh, to actually pass or to transmit your packets even when there's packet filtering on uh, the target uh, on the target end so when we talk about the types of scanning we typically have two types of scanning we'll, we also have vulnerability scanning but that's something i'll take a look at uh, in in its own section and uh, indeed we can perform vulnerability scanning with nmap that's something we can do but for now, let's just talk about network scanning and port scanning because it's relevant. So network scanning is the process of identifying active hosts on a target network with the goal of creating a detailed schematic of the network infrastructure. So basically, you're trying to find uh, what hosts are active and how they are, how they're connected to each other. Are they connected to any resources like a file server or a mail server and what their host names are, stuff like that. Uh, which also ties in closely to enumeration, which we'll also cover. And then you have port scanning, right? So port scanning is the process of probing the target with specific TCP flags with the aim of enumerating the running services and the respective ports based on the responses we get from the target. So you're, you're essentially crafting these, uh, these, specially, uh, these specially formulated uh, packets with specific TCP flags. And then these TCP flags is obviously going to give us various results based on the uh, on the responses we get from the target. And of course, you can do this manually through various packet crafting tools. Uh, but again, we're going to be focusing on using something like uh, Nmap or Network Map, as it's called. All right. So now that we have an understanding of the types of scanning, we can actually um, take a look at the various TCP flags. Right. So TCP flags are typically found in the TCP header and are responsible for the transmission and the flow of packets across the network. So they essentially control how data is sent, transmitted, how the, the data is processed, so on and so forth. Now, port scanning involves the use of specially crafted TCP flags, as I mentioned previously, in the packets, and uh, this is used to then determine the target operating system, uh, the service versions, and to check for the presence of packet filtering or a firewall. And we'll get to all of these various scans that we can run with Nmap. But it's important that we understand each of these TCP flags so that when we're, when we're actually typing out the scans, we know why we're typing them out and what their purpose is and what each flag is going to do on the target. Right. So let's start out with the first flag, which is the urge or the urgent flag. Now, this urgent flag is used to specify that the packet needs to be processed immediately. So you're trying to pass that across to the target or to any device that's going to be processing that packet. You then have your push 
or PSH flag, which again is used to transmit data immediately. You then have your FIN, which again uh, ends the transmission. You then have your ACK, which is uh, what we'll take a look at in a second when you're talking about the three-way handshake. So ACK is to acknowledge, so it acknowledges the receipt of a packet. And then your SYN for synchronization initializes a connection between a host and a target. So it's used to initialize a connection between two devices. And then you have your RST, which resets the connection. Uh, and whenever this is specified, it essentially just cuts the connection and does not allow for the connection to be completed or for any transmission of data uh, before that or after that uh, until a new connection is initialized. All right, so let's talk about TCP and the TCP through a handshake because this is going to be quite important. Now, TCP and UDP uh, are used for, you know, the transmission of packets across the network, and they usually handle this uh, very differently. So TCP is a connection-based connection. Uh, communication and UDP is a connection less communication. So uh, let me just explain this with TCP, you need to initiate or to establish a connection with your target before you can send packets to them. Uh, with UDP, you're typically just blasting out packets to your target, you really don't need to, uh, to, to establish a connection. So we'll talk about UDP later, but it's really not that important right now. Right now, we need to understand the three way handshake. So as I said, TCP is, is a connection that uh, that essentially requires the an active, um, it requ requires the establishment of a connection between the target and uh, between the client and the server or the, the host and the target, right? So let's talk about the the way the headers are used within a three way handshake. So you have your your, your typical SYN and SYNAC, and of course, you can then reset the connection. But let's talk about the how, how the, the the connection is uh, initialized. So you have your SYN packet that's going to be sent from the client to the target, right? And that's also sent with a sequence number. We're going to talk about sequence numbers when we're talking about packet crafting. And then you have uh, the, of course, the state is going to change on the server or the target side. So it's going to say SYN received. It's then going to send a SYN ACK. All right. And then uh, once the state is established, it then sends a uh, the the client then sends the server a an ACK or an acknowledgement uh, packet saying, "Hey, uh, we have acknowledged the connection." And it also sends a sequence number, and uh, then the state is established or a communication is established between the client and the server. So for all TCP connections, all of this needs to take place. Now with scans, uh, you typically will be sending these various packets uh, and uh, when we're talking about a full scan for example uh, a full scan involves uh, essentially establishing a um, establishing a TCP three-way handshake with all the ports on or, th or the ports that you specify on the target and the response you get will help you determine what service is running on that port or whether or not it's active so if you don't get a response it's it's pretty much dead and if you do get a response then the packet uh, then that port is likely to be open right so we'll also talk about port states it's a bit more complicated than that and uh, for example with a stealth scan you'll be essentially sending the sin uh, and then you get an acknowledgement packet and then you you essentially uh, hit reset or you use the reset um, flag uh, in a packet and that essentially resets the connection so you're not completing the connection you're essentially just cutting it in half and that reduces the time and is also used for various other purposes or various other means uh, more of which we'll talk about in uh, the f in future videos uh, but now that we have an understanding of the tcp3 handshake we can actually get started uh, with nmap and uh, we're going to be covering that in the next video so we'll start off with host discovery we'll then move on very swiftly to OS and service detection, which is where things get interesting, UDP scanning, stealth scans, firewall evasion, and then we'll finally take a look at the Nmap scripting engine. But I want that to have its own module because that's quite complex and very, very useful and ties in quite a bit to, um, to enumeration and vulnerability scanning. So with that out of the way, uh, let me know if you guys have any questions or suggestions. Uh, let me know in the comment section or you can post your questions on the Hackersploit forum at forum.hackersploit.org. The full write-up to this video is available on hackersploit.org in case you're looking for this information. And uh, yeah, do let us know if you have any feedback. We'd love to hear from you regarding what changes we can make or any improvements we can make. And I'll be seeing you in the next video.